Hello everyone. Welcome to the Rapid Miner Studio GUI overview video. This is one of a number of detailed videos that will explain how each operator within Rapid Miner works with additional context to help you understand better how to use the operator for your own needs. This video is going to give an overview of the GUI and touch on some high level concepts such as views, how to run a process, how to change operator parameters and how to save your process in the repository. When you run Rapid Miner, you'll see something like this. This is the uh, welcome screen or the home screen for version 6 of Rapid Miner Studio. Videos we will produce will use this uh, version wherever possible. There are some differences between it and version 5 and sometimes we may therefore need to include a version 5 view to help explain some of the differences. You will probably spend most of your time in the design and results view initially. So to go to design view you press F8 or press the button here. So this is the design view which is where processes are designed. You'll notice there are a number of windows arranged in, in this view. Let's look at the, each of these one by one. The operators view, as its name implies, gives you lists of operators that are available to use in a process. And it's a tree structure, so if we click on the little plus we can, for example, drill into um, operators that are available. And you'll see here's a naive Bayes operator which we can drag over to here. I won't sh I'll, we'll come to that in more detail later. But the, all the operators are here and there are many hundreds of these and they are grouped in a logical way but you can simply type in this box here and um, the window will use what you've typed to create a search. So you see I typed in naive here and naive Bayes was shown up. Also there are another, a number of other operators that have naive in the name and you can see that it's a, it's a good way to find things quickly if you know what you're looking for. The repositories window this gives you a tree-like view for all of the repositories that you may have created. Now when you install the product by default you get a number of samples and default locations. So for example, this, think of this as a location where data is stored or where processes are stored. And you'll find yourself write, reading and writing from the repository both processes and data and also a number of other types of object. So ne the next window is the parameters window here. Now each operator that you drag into the main window can have its m operation modified by changing the parameters associated with it. So the, the main process itself has parameters and you can change them here. Each time you drag a, an operator into the main process window the parameters change depending on what operator is selected. We'll see that a little bit more in a moment. Um, and in the f window at the bottom right, which is the help window, this shows help for an operator that is selected. I selected naive bays earlier, so if I select that again, or another one, let's, let's select K, nearest neighbours, you can see that the help changes here. and if I you can move the windows around like so and you can see more details. So the final window is, is the process window. This is where operators are dragged and joined together to make a process, a, an overall process. If I select it you can see for example the help changes as you would expect and you'll find yourself as you get more and more expert creating large processes within this window consisting of multiple operators joined together in 
whatever way you need to solve your, the problem you have. Now each operator can be moved around. So you, you saw me moving this earlier, and I can also do this. You can move the windows such that they float like this. You can you can change the size of them by picking their handles like this. You can. I'm now going to try and dock this one onto here. Oh no, I've made I've made one of alongside the help here. I can do all sorts of things like this. You'll notice there are some other buttons at the top, so if I do that, that causes the window to hide until you hover over it, or click it rather. You can do um, that, which causes it to maximise, and there are many other things you can do. You'll often find yourself making an error, so in that situation there is a menu item view restore default perspective which is often gets you out of trouble and i often use it myself okay let's run a simple process so let me fold away everything to keep the extraneous detail away and let's do the following let's find some data in our repository the famous iris data set and let's drag it which is left mouse click drag it and then release it in the main process. Then let's connect the output port by again left clicking and dragging and then releasing there on the result output. As you can see you can move the operator around by left clicking and dragging and now we've created our first process. What this is actually doing is doing a retrieve from the repository using the retrieve operator. If you might see here, retrieve iris retrieve. So the name of the process, the name that it's given to a person can see is retrieve iris. You can change that by typing in this box here. But the actual class of the operator is retrieve. And of course it has some parameters and you can see them here. So this is de describing in detail where this data is. It's in the samples data iris entry in the repository. And also you can see the help has changed. If you right mouse click on an operator, a sub menu comes up and you can do things like disabling the operator, changing its name, do other things to replace it with other operators, and set breakpoints. We'll cover those in a bit more detail later. You can even delete the thing by pressing delete here. Now let's run the process, and you can do that a number of ways. You can, for example, do process run, you can press F11, or what I do is I just press this button here. Having run it then, we, get, we go into the results view. You can see this by the top right here. The results view is in a different highlight. You can get to the results view by pressing F9. Now what's seen is, is a number of different views of the result itself. Now in this case, this result is um, shown as a table here. So if you know the Iris data set, you'll know. You can see there are 150 examples. An example is a row. And there are various different attributes, columns here, which describe different, in this case, measurements for a particular sort of iris. So that's the data tab. Now version 6 is different and displays data in a slightly different way. Um, but it's the, the essential information is obviously still there and version 6 presents some of the graphs in a nicer way. So the data view is, the, is essentially the table. The statistics view... Um, this gives you a summary of the various attributes and the data in general. So you can see, for example, that attribute A1, it's of type real. It has certain um, statistics associated with it. And clearly that's valid if it's a real number. The attribute, which is called label, that is actually um, not obviously a number. It's a nominal We'll come to the description. We have a glossary video in the next video, which will give some details about what these things are. And you can see here's a summary of, of you know what it's about that particular attribute. The charts um, view gives you the ability to plot various interesting charts. So, for example, you can do a scatter diagram, and now you can select 
things like attribute A1, attribute A2, we perhaps colour it in by the label. The advanced charts view, similar actually to the charts view, but with obviously far more sophisticated and far more power when you, if you want to draw pictures. So you might do this, you might do this, and you might do this, essentially recreating the one I just showed you. But there's, as you can see, there's a lot more flexibility here in the advanced view. And then finally, the annotation view. This lets you add in notes, essentially, by doing the add annotation here. And you can, if, if the particular process you ran had something interesting, you could record it for posterity here. Now, you'll notice the results view is just a view. It also has other things on it. So, for example, the result overview tab that gives you details of by simply clicking you can see more details it gives you details of what happened in the test with some summary data um, the results view also has a repositories tab which is the same view as in the design view and of course as before you can move these things around if you want and so on and so forth and you can even add new views so if I, for example, go show view, I could put in help in this view here, and I could move it round. I have all sorts of fun placing the things I wanted in, in, in different places. Now as before, I can if I get as if I get stuck, I can do this restore default perspective. You'll also notice it's possible you can actually create your own perspective. So once you you arrange things the way you want, you can do new perspective, and you'll be able to create your own view of how you like things. Okay, so let's go back to um, the process we created, and let's do some changes to it. So what we're going to do, this is the iris data set we retrieved earlier. Let's pick a, an operator at random. <laughs> I'm just going to pick the append operator. And as before, I'm dragging it across and I'm dropping it. Notice how I dropped it on the connection between the output and the, the result here. And by doing that, it gets connected automatically. Now I'm going to add another iris data set. So I'm going to go down here and do this. And I'm going to connect the output to the input of the append operator. Now notice how multiple inputs have start to appear. Now let's drag another one in. Let's just do golf. So let's drag that in here. And it's added another input. But notice how a little red warning triangle has come on. This often means there's a problem. RapidMind is very good at spotting potential problems. It doesn't always get it right, but it's a good indication often. So it's worth you know bearing it in mind. However, if you do see errors, don't be frightened to run a process because you never know it might work sometimes. For now, we'll 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 get rid of the append operator and we'll change it to another one. Which is the sub process operator. And I'm just simply going to do this. I'm going to connect all of the inputs to this sub process operator. Connect the output. And now you'll notice that the sub process operator has a small icon on the bottom right hand corner. This indicates that it can itself contain operators. So we can look at that by double clicking here. And now we're inside the subprocess operator, and you'll see three inputs. So what I'm going to do is this: simply connect the input to the output without doing any processing whatsoever. So if I do that, I can navigate back to the main process by pressing this button here. I can actually select this button as well, and there's a there's a menu item up here. If I do this, I go back to the main process, and now. I've essentially connected the input to the output directly, and I can do this. I can connect three inputs to the subprocess operator, three outputs to the output outside world. 
Now I can run this. If I run that, we notice that we, we have a results view again, but this time there are more tabs present. And each tab corresponds to one of the data sets. So you see there's, there are two iris ones. Here's the first one. Here's the second one. And then there's a golf data set, which is this third one. Let's go back to the design view. Um, now let's set a breakpoint. I can do this. If I select an operator, let's say right click on it, breakpoint after. You can also do F7 for that. Now a little icon appears. If I run the process now by pressing this button here, you can see that I only get one tab in the results view, which is the result of the retrieval of the iris data set for the iris 2 operator. And now I can either continue or I can stop. I'm going to choose to stop for the sake of argument. Um, and you can see that's what this was. This was the retrieve iris brackets 2 operator and by setting a breakpoint you can essentially trace how data flows through the system. There are different types of breakpoint. You can do a breakpoint before and a breakpoint after. So for example if I do a breakpoint before the subprocess operator I should expect to see three inputs displayed as tabs in the results view which is sure enough exactly what I get. Now obviously uh, this is a very simple example but it shows the main point Let's go back to the design view, clear that breakpoint. One final thing is execution order. Sometimes it can be very important to make sure your process is operating in the right order. And, and the way to see that is to press this button here, which is the execution order button. And you can see this process operates in the following order. This one goes first, the this middle one here goes second, and the bottom one goes third. And then finally the subprocess goes. You can change the order. I can do this. So I can make by simply right clicking and selecting that particular operator. I can say have this one go first, the top one go second, and the middle one go third, and then finally the subprocess, which must by definition always wait for all its inputs. It must go forth. So finally, let's save a process, load it again and export and import them just so we can be confident that we can save our work and share it with others. To save a process you do the following. You do save process as and you pick somewhere to save it. I shall save it in a repository I made earlier called videos. I happen to create a folder underneath that called processes. So I'm going to simply select that and do um, first example as the name of this process. So I've saved it. If I do, if I want to test that it still works, I'm going to do the following. I'm going to do new process. So I've cleared everything. And now I can do this. If I want to see this, reload this process, I double click on it and up comes the following. So this is exactly the th same thing we saved. I could run this again and it would still work. Um, if I want to export the process to a file, I do simple as this really. I do export process and I can choose to save it I'll save it on the C drive because why not so that's created a file on my top level if I now do import data import process rather I can simply import it From the C drive, there it is, first example, .rmp is the default process extension. There we go. So I've successfully imported that process. So in summary, let's recap. We've seen an overview of the GUI. We've looked at views. We've looked at running processes. We've looked at changing operator parameters. And we've seen how you can save your processes in the repository or export them as files.